Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Raw Rules as Written. My name is Matt Robertson, otherwise known as Grape Ape. And I'm Stefan Sarat, otherwise known as DM Bad Wrong Fun on a couple social medias. And uh, we have a wonderful guest tonight, the infamous Harley Strow. Possibly, hey guys. possibly our most prestigious guest ever, <laughs> Stefan. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, guys. Well, we Absolutely. are very excited to have you here, Harley, and I know a lot of people were also excited. Uh, we didn't have any really questions. We, usually we ask questions of the previous episode to the new guest, but um, Stefan Pogue, usually, he, he talked mostly about art, uh, so I, that's not your area of expertise, is it? No, it is not. No, I, I bow down before all the DCC artists. I, I was just thinking the other day, like, you know, can you try, like, imagining what this game would be like without Pogue and Mullen and Kovacs? Like, it's not, I mean, is it DCC at that point? Like, you strip all that art out and, I don't know, we owe more to the artists than we recognize, I think. I, I agree with that. Uh, three of them got Goody Awards, though, so uh, we're, yeah. we're headed on the right path. <laughs> um, right but we're going to hit you with our hurt first question. You were in the hot seat tonight. Um, Elena, if you could bring up question one. When spell burning, can you sacrifice from more than one ability score? So can you sacrifice from strength, agility, and stamina all at the same time? Absolutely. I'm, I'm going to let my players like burn themselves down to the ground, but only because... Um... It's, it's crucial that you have the follow-up, right? Like, you need to have the campaign running the next, like, three months after that where the wizard is, you know, has a three strength and, you know, and, and is, you know, he's burnt all his luck on something else and horrible things are happening to him. Um, for I, I, One of the home campaigns I run is for the library kids. And I have a table for him where I actually, like, because he's always, he's like, all right, I'm going to burn, I'm going to burn, you know, 20 points to get this spell off. <laughs> suck it and then but then it's like okay yeah but and then, he, and then he like he goes back to his hovel and he's like all right i'm gonna hide out here for the next three weeks i'm like no dude like there's gonna be an ex inciting incident between now and then you don't get to decide when that happens i'm not gonna be the jerk that decides when that happens so we're gonna start making luck checks as to see like when the next adventure kicks off and like maybe his strength is still a five or you know maybe you know anyway so yes i let my players you know burn all the stats down um it's fun. The, the reason this question came up, because somebody uh, asked in the Discord, Elena, if you could bring up handout 1A. Page 107, it says, In attempting Spellburn, the wizard temporarily expends points of their strength, agility, or stamina score to enhance their spell check. So that, that word or right there uh, made them question, and I, and I think I've seen everybody play it where you can burn you know, all three, however much you want, uh, but that word or right there almost can be interpreted as you can only spend one of the three. Yeah, no, that definitely reads as an either or. Um, but you could also make the case that if it's DCC, you're not going to stress about it too much. Like, <laughs> True. Uh, so which which under, undercuts the rules of the show. No. But um, but no, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, but, I, you know, in every tournament we've played, we've run... Um, you know, uh, wizards. Well, you know they've they've burnt all sorts of different stats. Um, I'm hard pressed to think of an instance when, out in the wild, you know, in in a in a formal DCC game, you know, we we've prohibited wizards from uh, not burning multiple stats at the same time. Stefan, what do you think? Yep, that's that's much the same way. Yeah, I've I've seen people ask the question too, and it's because of it's because of that or. Um, yeah, I've always allowed people to to mix and match as they please. And so I scan. Uh, there's oh, all uh, there's the bit in the rule book. We'll get to a little bit later about you know if you burn twenty points of uh, of uh, of your ability scores and you know you get this. There's no way you can do that from just one ability score. So it's a little yeah. the clarity is a little spread out, but I think it's there. Absolutely. And well, I, it sure would solve so many of those higher like spell chart though, if you just limited it to just like, oh, you have a dex of seven, well you're gonna burn four. I don't know. I might <laughs> I might have convinced myself that I just want to do just one stat now. My uh, games would be a lot more sane. Look for other examples in the book. And so on page one oh seven, Elena, if you can bring up handout one B, 
Uh, this is when, in offering a demon a share of his life force, he trades seven points of strength to give himself a plus seven to his next spell check. Kind of explaining how spell burn works. There aren't any examples in the book of spell burning multiple ability scores. Uh, so, without there being you know written examples in there or a clarification either or. I, I can understand how people would question that, but I, I agree. You can burn. You wouldn't be able to get to that 20 uh, without burning from all three. Yeah. Uh, so, I will say, I, I was on Mauve Mike last night and, uh, you know, said, hey, yeah, we're going to have Harley on, on Raw tomorrow. And Mike was like, oh, well, I'm not sure he's the guy to talk about rules. He breaks them more than anyone else. <laughs> He's totally right. Guilty as charged. You can see me blushing through the internet. Oh my god. I'm so bad at this. Yeah. Yeah. When um when I first my very first submitted adventure to uh to to Goodman Games, you know, it was Legacy of the Savage Kings. It was under 3.5 rules. Um and and the 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 feedback I got from Joseph because it was him, you know, reviewing the manuscripts at the time was like, well, you got this rule wrong, and like you made up this rule about drowning. Like check page one ninety six. <laughs> like I was off like every single iteration. I need to drag up that email. There, there's there's there are lots of things that I continue to get wrong. Gladly, you, you do need to drag up that email. That'd be hilarious. All right, so our official answer is Harley. When spell burning, can you sacrifice for more than one ability score? I'm going to say yes, even though it says or in there. You could also read that as strength, agility, or stamina in whatever you know order that you wanted. Stefan, what's your official answer? Yes, if if you want to single it down, it yeah, as Harley said, make your games a little more sane. Um, but that's that's not rules as written. Right, and Harley, you get the last word. Uh, what is your? Right, I'm, I'm going to go multiple stats. Multiple stats, but I encourage judges to track it and make it matter. Like you know, once that encounter's over with. And I got a little trick question in here, one that I didn't pre-send to you. So healing spell burn, Elena. If you can bring up handout one C, uh, also on page 107, it says ability scores lost in this way return as the wizard heals. Each day they heal. Each day they do not attempt spell burn, they recover one point of ability score. Mm -hmm. um, now, what I didn't know, and what may or may not be rules is written, in a forum post, Harley Stroh said one point per ability per, ability per day. So you can recoup agility, stamina, and strength all at the same time. And that was mm. June 8th, to 2011. If you could bring up handout yeah. 1D. 2011, <laughs> dude. What what iteration is that? Yeah. No, that was serious beta. The beta no, days. One, yeah. So <laughs> one point a day. It's only one, 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 one stat point a day. Not from all yeah. three. No, sir. Har no. Harley's allowed to change his opinion once a decade. <laughs> Yeah. What's the, there you go. Absolutely. I, mean, I didn't even know that was a thing, though, back in the beta days, that you can heal strength, agility, and stamina one point a day. Have you guys looked over those beta rules at all? Like like the levels max out at five? And uh... I don't know where. I I found them like once on the internet a long time ago, didn't save them, and I haven't been able to find them again. But I'd be curious. I, where, like, I've yeah, got a copy. I can see. send it to you. Yeah, do I that. I didn't know you didn't have a copy. Uh, yeah, I have pulled some uh, stuff from the beta rules before. Uh, yeah, but back in the day, everybody, you could heal one point of strength, agility, and stamina per day. Uh, no longer. Uh, I can't believe this game's a decade old. That's crazy. It doesn't <laughs> feel like that. Our second question, if you could bring up question two, Elena, is when a caster burns 20 points worth of abilities, do they still roll their spell check, Harley? Absolutely. I will die on this hill. Yes. Okay. You always got to okay, roll it. If you get a one, it's still a one. Always. Stefan, what do you think? I So I'd been playing it as no, because, because in the book, there's a line, it's, it's handout 2B, or 2A, actually. Um, and the way I read it, it was, okay, if you burn 20 points, we just, it says you treat your next spell check as a roll of a natural 20. So, oh, okay, it's a 20, and then we add, you know, your intelligence modifier and double your, your class level. That's what we're doing. Well, that kind of stinks. You can't get that max result, but you are safe. You know, you don't have to roll and maybe get that one. That's how I've been playing it. But uh, I don't know. Uh, there's been some discussions online recently, and I've already been convinced the other way. 
I think that is uh, how everyone interprets it, too. Elaine, if you could bring up that handout that Stefan was referencing, 2A, uh, on page 107 on, also, it says automatic criticals. There's one additional option for Spellburn. A wizard who sacrifices a full 20 points of ability scores in one fell swoop automatically treats their next spell check as a roll of a natural 20. Uh, now, we have a very animate fan of DCC called uh, Bruce Fur on the Dungeon Crawler server, and he's like, you know, rule of cool. Uh, they're sacrificing 20 points worth of ability. It's a, it's a huge sacrifice on their part, so it should be worth it. They should absolutely still roll, and he's right there with you, Harley. But if you look at the wording, it says there is one additional option. That means something alternative from normal spell burn. Normal spell burn would be one for one use of points. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This one says one additional option, meaning an alternative solution to avoid that negative one fumble or what, maybe. Mm, all right, that. man. I'm tempted to come and grab the book. Man, I, I'm still, I'm still with. Every time you cast a spell, there has to be a chance for like chaos to reach through the void and and warp things horribly you might even like go with that max result and also like roll your corruption i think they're all, magic always has to be dangerous always then the end of that it says automatically treats their next spell check as a roll of so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's saying almost that you don't roll because you're treating it as a roll of natural 20 so you wouldn't roll it yeah i i yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. You're gonna bury me on this hill, but I'm still gonna make him roll that die once. All right. If we could bring up handout two B, Elena, and the reason Bruce Sir is so adamant about this is because why would you ever burn twenty when you can just burn nineteen? Um, this is a, a roll result chart for one d twenty plus nineteen, and you know you're gonna get twenty a hundred percent of the time. Uh, so only if you roll that one would it be a fumble. 95% of the time, otherwise, you're going to be successful. Uh, reaching above the max score of 32 most of the time on first level spells, at least 40% of the time. So it, it almost, it, the rule contradicts itself where I spend 20 points, but I get a lower result. Why wouldn't I just burn 19 and just wipe everything out? Hmm. Stefan, what are your thoughts? Like I said, I, I kind of already expressed, yeah, I that's how I've been playing it, and that's how I remember being in a game where I was judging it. You were a player, Matt. You were, it was a one shot. You wanted a patron. You were like, what's my patron's thing? Let's do it. You like crippled yourself for the entirety of the game, but you got a great patron bond result. And I said, well, if you do 20, if you spell burn 20, it's just going to, it's most likely going to be less because we don't roll if you do 20, and then you spell burn 19 instead. Um, and you got a, I think you rolled like a four still, uh, <laughs> where it wasn't even the max patron bond result. Um, but yeah, that was a couple years ago now, I think. And, yeah. uh, and Brucifer has since convinced me you, you should roll because, yeah. uh, that's, that's how I'd been running it because I thought it was rules as written, but I didn't actually like it that rule. Right. Right? I mean, doesn't your soul die a little bit when you're like told, no, 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 no. If you just like move this many chips into the center of the table you yeah. don't have to you, no magic is always going to be dangerous yeah i think i think yeah well and that's a good point so if you're treating the role as a natural 20 you can't fail elaine if you bring up handout 2c uh page 108 talks about the failed spell burn any magic user who rolls a natural one on a spell check while using spell burn suffers the loss of the ability points so they lose that 20 and the associated corruption automatically you get corruption uh also one permanent point of ability loss so there is a big risk for rolling the dice uh, even when you spell burn 20 not a big risk five percent risk big enough <laughs> it'll always show up right big enough when you're a weak wizard so. <laughs> yeah I mean, that's at the cod table and like he's like no we're gonna do this we're gonna burn 20 and like you know that one's gonna come up and it, that's when the table starts cheering and like those are the the moments we live for as gamers <laughs> I, I do have a particularly uh, metagaming player sometimes uh, called Sirius in the Reaver Express. And uh, he had a spell with Temporal Echo, one of the mercurial effects. So, Elena, if you could bring up Handout 2D. Temporal Echo is each time a wizard casts a spell, he predicts the numerical result of his spell check. 
if he rolls this number exactly, it recasts itself each round for 1d3 rounds. So by using the rule that I employed, that it's a natural 20 and plus your level, you know, he's like, all right, well, I'm going to get an automatic 22. So my guess is 22. I spell burn 20 points. And so he automatically got the temporal echo to recast the spell over and over. No, 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 no. At that point, you don't know that. The hand of God does not stand for that. Come on, dude. Like, <laughs> it's too much like science. Yeah, that's phlogiston reverb. But, like, you don't want to... Yeah, no. Uh-uh. That's 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 three rolls on the phlogiston table is what that is. That's, <laughs> that's, that's like you've, you, you've, you've shoved the portable hole inside the bag of holding at that point. Let's Let's... Let's see what really happens. No, so I, I should. I'll I'll punish him next time. So hardly, hardly. It's no I... punishment. It's brilliant. I think you get away with it once, and then after that, um, you're you're toying with God. All right. So uh, our final answer is: when a caster burns twenty points, twenty points worth of abilities, do they still roll their spell check? Stefan, what's your answer on this one? Uh, they they do still have to roll, and they can still mess it all up by getting a one. I'm going to say no. Rules is written, uh, because it says there's one additional option, it means it's different from the normal spell burn. Because you treat your roll as a natural 20, it means you're not rolling, is how I interpret it. So I'm going to say no. Uh, Harley, what's your final answer? Well, I don't like you, but I respect your style. But um, I'm going to say you have to roll no matter what. All yes, right. you all have. Yeah. There's that 5% chance. There you have it. Bruce will be happy to hear uh, that uh, you're changing minds, Harley. Uh, question three, if you'd bring that up for us, Elena. Uh, certain spells require Spellburn to be cast. Does that count toward the spell check result of the spell? And I'm, I'm not sure if I still know the answer to this spell, this question. I mean, yeah. It, it, no, no. It, it, it's, it's a component that, that it empowers the spell and that makes the, the spell active and then beyond that you can you can build upon that but no uh-uh. the, if it if it requires a spell burn to activate the spell you have to spell you have to spell burn in addition to it to get those bonuses all right Stefan, what do you think I, that is my same opinion sorry i'm, I'm looking down to res- do things in chat but i am fully paying attention uh but yes you have to it it, it is the key to unlock it but it's it's not an additive bonus Lane, if you could bring up handout 3A for us. I posted some first level spells. Uh, Chill Touch, the caster must spell burn at least one point when casting this spell. Find Familiar, the caster upon completion of the ritual and a minimum spell burn of 10 is required to cast the spell. Uh, And Invoke Patron, which of course is at least one point of spell burn to cast that. Um, I don't know. I'm of the opinion that since it's called Spellburn, and we know by definition that Spellburn is a one-for-one addition, I I almost think, and I've always played, that it gets added, especially that Find Familiar. That's Seriously? Spellburning 10. <laughs> you have, you have okay. to Spellburn to, to cast Find Familiar. Yeah, but the, that's because it's like, you know, it's a, it's an enormous, yeah. you know, work of magic you're creating. All right, so let me ask you this. If it requires a spell burn of one point, uh-huh. like, you know, everybody casts, um, Chill Touch is a very popular one. The wizards get all the time and they cast it and prepare their weapon with Chill Touch. Does that spell burn count if they roll the one? Would it be one permanent point of ability loss, corruption, and that mm. one point loss temporarily. Oh yeah, absolutely. So those spells are much more dangerous. Uh, you know, Chill Touch doesn't. It's not just a failure. It's an ability point loss just by casting Chill Chill Touch. I'm 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 comfortable with that. <laughs> Stefan, oh, what hey. do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm 100 percent uh same answer. It is uh, it's just part of the game, y'all. To learn a new spell. If you don't like it. All right. So let's, I guess we'll give our final answers here. Certain spells require Spellburn to be cast. And there's a few of them. I just listed the first level ones. Does that count toward the spell check result of the spell? Stefan? Uh, no, it does not. 
It is just an activation requirement. I'm going to say yes, it does. Because the wording in raw doesn't say that it's a component. It's It calls it spellburn. And spellburn is defined that every ability point they expend, they add a plus one. Harley, how Bob, do you see it? What, what's Bob going to have Stephen so much fun with you. Mind. Yeah, Stefan speaks my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an activation. Absolutely. All right, I try to go with what is written directly in the book. Uh, oh, but, are you sure you're playing DCC, man? <laughs> I mean, I do. I like to understand the rules before I change them. And uh, no. most of the time I like to play rules as written. And then, you know, the rule of cool is right underneath that. That's fair. That's fair. We need you to run tournament games, though, then. I, <laughs> we need to... I'm going to be at GaryCon. So if there's a tournament at GaryCon, I'll run. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make it to Gen Con for another couple of years. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, but may, me and Stefan might be able to set up a con down here at a, a tournament here at NTRPG or something in Texas. Oof. Wow, that's not a bad idea. All right. All right. Well, let's get to question four because we still got some Purple Planet questions coming up. When a caster dies, do effects, ongoing effects from their spells stop? What do you think, Harley? Yeah, I think um, I think I, it 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 makes me sad, but I think they continue. I think they continue. Unfortunately, Stefan, what do you um, think? Yeah. Uh, well, the the permanent ones, like a I think a familiar. It it's I it's different upon different spells, is what I'm essentially going to say. Like if they've created a wizard staff or a magic sword, that's still going to stick around. A familiar. Um, Maybe I think in one is it in one of the familiars? Let's like let's the, say the wizard, wizard might live on, but if it's just like a choking cloud, I think it would end when they died. I think the the effect continues, and I'm going to tell you guys why. Let let's say wizard is casting spider climb and gets like a super high result affecting two other people. They're 200 feet up on a wall. If that wizard dies, they fall. Is that a, is that what you're saying here, Stefan? That's sweet. Yeah, I I would. <laughs> I mean, protect your um, wizards. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's also incumbent upon whether or not, like, um, you know, is is concentration required? Right. You start to you can kind of start to like needle it out then. Like, if I don't have to mm. concentrate on it, well, you're dead. I stopped concentrating. I don't know. I would agree with that. If the uh, spell requires concentration, then yeah, then it would be dispersed. So I found some examples. I, I dug through the rule book. Uh, Elena, if you could bring up handout 4A, uh, there aren't any examples. It, it's not rules as written if the spells end or not. So it's up to each judge to determine for their table. But on page 425, serpent men have human bodies with snake heads. Once per day, they can cast an illusion that causes its head to appear like that of a specific person. If the snake man, uh, the snake man can reveal their true form when they want to at will, or their true form is revealed upon death, which means the magic ends. So there's an example of it ending when you die. Uh, if we cast, if we bring up handout 4B, Holy Sanctuary, this effect lasts one turn. It is immediately dispelled if the cleric attacks or take aggressive action in any way. So that kind of sets a precedence for. If they act in any other way that's aggressive, the magic could end. So there could be conditions that cause the magic to end. Then finally, if we bring up handout 4C, uh, the snake charm. This one goes the opposite way. The duration is indefinite until magically dispelled. Targets forever regard the cleric as a friend. So, I mean, even if that cleric died, it says right there the magic is indefinite. So we have instances of both examples in other areas of the book. Uh -huh. But you, you can trace the, the, the serpent men. I mean, that, that's a King Cole story, right? Um, when he's running around killing them and, or is it Conan? I think it's King Cole. And like, like reveals, you know, who they are. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's directly out of the book. Actually, um, maybe somebody in the chat knows specifically the story it is, but by this ax I rule or something. Um, yeah. So we've got yeah. instances of it breaking when, you know, alternative actions happen, you know, assuming the wizard dies. We've got instances of it staying, 
Uh, I did have one more handout, handout 4D, and of course monsters don't act the same as characters. Um, but if the uh, confinement, if a demon breaks its magical bonds, holding it to this plane, it can confine the character on that plane. Um, and the character cannot pass through it by any means until it is dispelled, the character is freed, or banished back to their native state. Um, so that one would be a stuck uh, cleric. It doesn't say anything about death. They would still be stuck there in that plane of fire. So I'm not sure. I like I like where you're going, where the magic is, you know, the phlogistine is an entity in itself. And once this magic is con conjured, it can't be dissipated so easily. It's been summoned, mm -hmm. and it has to run its course. What's your final answer, Stefan? I think for my final answer, um, it, it does very much depend on the type of magic. I think Harley brought up a really good thing I hadn't thought about before with mentioning concentration. I think if a spell requires concentration, it would end immediately. I think if it doesn't, it would probably run its course. But then you also have things that are going to remain permanent, sword magic and wizard staff. And some things where, like, I don't know, with, like, a familiar, like the demonic familiar, it has a piece of the wizard's soul, and it says the wizard yeah. then cohabitates that familiar's body is the familiar the, if you know a demonic familiar does and the wizards cohabitating the body once the wizard dies are they doing that on the mortal plane or does the demonic familiar get to go back to the abyss and are they doing it down there right what's well, you know then you got other from it so i don't it depends but for most spells ends immediately if it is a concentration spell otherwise it keeps going i think that's a good point i, I should have brought that fine familiar one up um so when a caster dies, do any effects from uh, ongoing spells stop? I'm, I'm going to agree with exactly what Stefan said. It's not rules as written. Um, it's not defined in the rule book if you're looking for it. Uh, but concentration is defined. And I don't have a handout for that. But if concentration breaks, that magic is going to end. Um, permanent things that magic has been imbued in, uh, like staves, wands, swords... Mm -hmm. Uh, that's going to stay because it's a it's a one time yeah. burn to instill that magic in the item. Then otherwise, if it doesn't clarify either of those two conditions, the magic I think uh, runs its course. Uh, what's your final answer, Harley? I'm in consensus with you guys on this one. I think it makes sense. All right, there you have it. Yeah. Now we are going to get to the nitty gritty and ask you specifically about the Purple Planet. We know you've been thinking all about it, and I, I've run, uh, I don't think Matt's had much of a chance, but I've, I've run not all, but some of the Purple Planet adventures. So I, I had a great time on there, and it is, uh, it's absolutely worth running up to, uh, you know, getting up to those levels, and I use it to bookend a, an amazing campaign. Um, I played in the one where we were planet jumping, I think. It, yeah, that that was just a whole homebrew thing of mine, but uh, and then I played you got, a, one, got a good taste. Played in the one where we found like a dimensional ship or something in a, in a. That was Escape from the Purple Planet. Nice. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, you're 100 percent right. Um, I think I drove the dimensional ship. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think that's you died the first time you tried that, um, that but it was a funnel, true. so there's more. Um, but one of the things the the Purple Planet, it, it's it's kind of uh, the same, in my mind, it's about the same size as Athis from Dark Sun. It is, it is a portion of this planet, but it's not the whole thing. And it's relatively a small portion, um, which kind of leads into question five. Uh, only the northern hemisphere of the purple planet is mapped. Is, is the southern hemisphere more deserts and wasteland, or is it different? Though it, it's undefined until published, so this is kind of... Right. What it is in your mind to, to spur on yeah. some prospective judges out there. And, uh, well, and we do have a are, handout you, of, yeah. uh, of the map that's uh, from one of the yeah. modules. Uh, it's handout 5A if Elena wants to bring it up. Yeah, so on, well, I mean, we're just talking about game lore now. So I think you said, you, yeah. you know, it's whatever whatever the judge wants to decide, you know, for their own game. Um, excuse me. but. You know, for uh, Chessmen on the Purple Planet, and then the follow-up adventure for that, 
um there's all this this lore you know among amongst the kith that you know there's this holy land that they're going you know to travel towards and um and so they they have a notion in their mind you know that that is that it's this esteemed place that you know if we just get there you know like you know the the wars will be over and and you know and we'll we'll all live in 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 in, in happiness you know forever and in, in this you know in this golden land but they haven't made it there yet they haven't made it off the uh, the plateau and and because of you know this constant infighting they they, they probably never will the pcs being the the opportunity to to shift that that balance that that power power you know structure power and 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 maybe you know possibly you know lead you know this 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 enormous war band you know their armies down off the plateau in in, in search for the holy land is 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 is, is playing um, again you know you kick it back to the judges um they can make what they want of it the, the you know the intent was and you're right when you said it's a really small area was to allow for um you know judges to 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 make what they would of the purple planet um you know it draws from so many different sources and none of them you know fully accurately that um the different judges depending on you know whatever pulps they were in love with or whatever you know they wanted to bring to the game could could design the world after that you know everyone would have this common starting place and then they, they could build the world out. So on, your, yeah. on your purple planet, Harley, is the holy sanctuary on the other side of the planet? Is it actually there? I, they don't know yet. They got to get there. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> they're, 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 um, they're, they're, it's, it's an opportunity, you know, for me to be, you know, testing out a, 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 a you know, a war game system, you know, with my players. Um, a couple of years ago, we had a, we had a birthday party and like, you know, the kids were all like, running their different war bands against one another um yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see but um you know the chessmen on the purple planet has it was was submitted a while ago and and i've seen the art and it's all coming together and hopefully you know warlords on the purple planet after that you guys heard it here first two modules for purple planet coming down i'm so stoked it's so much fun to, i'm stoked I'm, I'm really excited me too i I'm I'm very much looking forward to that, even though my players ended up killing the purple planet in the, the end of their game. Uh, they absolute there uh anyone who's read John Carter of Mars knows uh there's yes. a very important machine on Mars that keeps yep. life going. Um they used that max result for planar shift and just oh. took it with them. <laughs> <laughs> they put it in the swamps outside Punjar. The, on top of the demon haunted remains of, uh, or once demon haunted remains of where the Bride of the Black Mance was. So I'm sure that's that awesome. is going to not be haunted at all. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a beautiful campaign you have there, dude. Uh, what's, a, <laughs> what's our next question, Stefan? Yeah, getting, getting away from the anecdotes, uh, how can PCs learn the Kith language or, or learn languages in general? There's Comprehend Language, of course. Yes. Uh, you have a little bit of advice in, in the book, uh, in the purple planet for this but uh so i don't know kith or in general uh i could i could try to learn spanish again if i really wanted to and right, uh, they right, might be able to right. try to learn kith yeah so um one of my uh i'm i'm always trying like to build out like the thief skills a little further and so like like reimagining um the sky itself is okay. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to disguise my voice, or um, and so. But anyway, so the the read languages on the on the on the thief skills has always been in the back of my head. It's like, oh, I, they're going to be really gifted at this. Okay, they're going to you know, hopefully you know they'll be able to study. It's not just the reading, but they'll you know be able to interpret that as um, you know as, as them being able to to speak the kith language. All that being said, I think it was. Um, James called me out like five years ago. It's, it's a horrible, it's a horrible paragraph to include in Purple Planet because it really does um, hamstring uh, players so much. I think, I think there's, I remember, I remember originally writing it, you know, it was the desire of like, okay, well, I'm going to make the, the, the wizard character or, you know, possibly the mm -hmm. elf character, like, you know, take this role of, of communicating, you know, between the, the two groups. But, in the end, is is that sort of granularity really fun or worth it? Probably not. Yeah. You know, so. And I'll, not not to 
embarrass you. I already had it ready. That that paragraph uh, or couple oh, paragraphs. Yeah, it is handout six B, and uh, I won't I won't read the whole thing. But it, it essentially goes uh, easiest done with com- uh, comprehend languages. Failing that, wizards and thieves. So I you're you mentioned the the read languages for thieves and just intelligence checks for wizards. But it's a DC twenty to help to attempt to discern patterns among the guttural growls and rasping barks. Um, PCs who can communicate must do with monosyllabic words. And all other characters are welcome to ask suggestions or or give suggestions to the party speaker who is going to be just about the only one who can understand the kith. And if that fails, uh, act out some gestures. Yeah, Uh, I think that sounded a lot funner in my head than it does at at the gaming table. Have you had playtest tables that couldn't understand it and had to act out their? Oh yeah, no, no, for sure, for sure. But I think it's—I mean, it's cool for about a session, right? And then <laughs> after that, it's—you know—it's like, all right, come on, can we like? So maybe the, maybe that's it. Maybe it's uh, you know, time, you know, exposure, your immersion, you're immersed in the Kith culture, and, and uh, you know, give me a, a DC ten in check at the end here, and if you succeed, okay, now you're you're passably fluent in kith um but yeah it, it's it's you hold to that and it just can it, it where's what's where's the payoff you know like we have a finite amount of time in our lives to play these games you don't need to make them miserable um it, you know use it while it's fun and then after that discard we got any yeah, uh, comments from the chat, Stefan? What's the uh, what's the chat uh, none, about? None purple planet specific. I will say if anyone is is struggling with this in their game in the uh, in the Tomb of the Ancients supplement, there is like a six ish like mini adventures. In one of those, I think it's like Sotark the Destroyer. You can find an artifact that'll help out with the translation. <laughs> So that that's a good way around it if uh, if you players don't want to act it out anymore and and you can do it without just kind of giving them too easy of a win. Let's make them quest for it. There you go. True. Well, I think we got one more qu- uh, question for the Purple Planet for you, Harley. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it's uh, for one shots. How much information do you give players regarding the the relic and rune system? Oh, none. Uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> I, I I I don't give them any. Yeah, I remember um, we were play testing with Jen Brinkman at Gen Con, and you know I, I was I was so proud to like bust out my handout, and uh, it's like okay, what do you touch? And she's like, I touch them all. <laughs> it just like it, it nearly uh, ended our game. Yeah, uh, um, handout six B. If if yeah. Elena, you can bring that up. That'll that'll show the viewers what we're talking about. Then yeah, it's the unlabeled one doesn't look like anything you're gonna figure out just by uh, you're not gonna be like oh i know the ancient hieroglyphics yeah, yeah um, so yeah. harley let everybody know what the relics and ruins do that might not have had the, played the purple planet before oh well it's 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 akin to like folks that are familiar with like gosh was it metamorphosis alpha no it was, it was one of the old tsr adventures oh embarrassing um uh, uh yeah on Please. The, there's an OAR of it. Uh, I know, right? Oh, this it's is on a, my shelf. Sure. I need to put on my glasses to to be able to read the spine. Anyhow, you're you're essentially you're, you're, to barrier peaks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's embarrassing. I'm sorry. Um, and and, and so it can, like similar to barrier peaks. Um, there's there's a sequence of, of of runes you need to you know to press in a certain way you know to activate this relic. But I think I think that's that's part of the joy is or at least yeah no that's that's part of the joy is 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 kind of fumbling your way through it you know so often Mm -hmm. it's it's hard to design a relic that doesn't like doesn't look recognizable to us in our modern eyes yeah you know so like a you know, a blaster always looks like a blaster and you know you discern the shape and you immediately know what it does. It's like okay well as long as I don't point one end at you know a friend you know we'll probably be okay and so this is a way of trying to introduce you know some some mystery on the player's side and and making sure that everything wasn't immediately inferable and i i think Excuse you guys me. did a really good job with that and 
you kind of it's not the same symbology but i know there's uh some similar i mean it's drawn by by doug kovac so some similar symbology on the chain coffin spinning wheel and i imagine we're gonna see some more spinning wheels that look semi reminiscent at least yeah it'd be fun at some point to like to take all of doug's symbols and try to derive some meaning from them because you know he he has some plan here uh that, that none of us have figured out yet you know you take you know the the artwork from well actually yeah it's behind me you can't see the whole thing but the you know the the seven pits of Cezarcon, and he has symbols in there, and then DCC one hundred. You know, there's there's very intentional, you know, shapes and 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 runes. Um, yeah, we should collect them all at some point and see if we can formulate a system out of them. That, that's the real DCC secret message, right? It's it's not in the core <laughs> rule book. You need to buy every single product. Uh, connection and shout out to our last guest, Stefan Pogue. Um, Harley, when you submitted art requests for uh, DCC 100, were you, did you just say, here's what's written, give me whatever's in your head, or did you have, uh, like, an idea of what you wanted to see? Wow. That's a great question. Um, I, and, and I, I, I have a, the best, the best artworks of DCC are when the, the artist gives gives their own their their own visual my my imagination ends at a certain point you know if 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 pogue or mullen picks it up after that you know kovacs you know or mcdevitt immediately this it's going to be so much better there's multiple illustrations in there where i describe something and uh and one of the dcc artists you know took it away came back and made something far more cooler than i could have imagined because they're all they're all you know they they're visual thinkers you know i like to excuse me i like to think i'm a visual thinker but these are artists you know they 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 you know it, it lives in their bodies um and so just the same way that you know for sailors on the starless sea you know doug redesigned you know molon at the end there um and which informed the adventure and made the adventure 10 times cooler um than i had originally written it so too for dcc 100 you know the artists they took my ideas. They were very kind. They were very, you know, sensitive to what we tried to illustrate. But then they came back with something far cooler. Awesome. Well, I figured, uh, you know, I didn't think of it before, but let's ask you the two questions that Bob answered in episode 12. Um, can a dual-wielding thief perform a double backstab? Like if they have two actions, for example. No. What? <laughs> what? No, come on! You're, what? You're letting him re-roll on everything else, but you won't allow a dual backstab, like two daggers <laughs> in the back? You, no, there's it's one dagger in the back. I mean, it's one backstab. No, oh. it's a, it, 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 What if it's uh, he's got the high agility, so he can do the the two weapon fighting, and there's two I, guards uh, back to him. They're both boo. just chatting away. Okay, so it's it's if not it's even on the same target. person. Okay, separate target. Because you're, you're going to get the critical, you know, so that crit applies to both weapons. But yeah, all right, mm -hmm. separate targets, that'd be sweet. All right. All right. Well, the other question we asked Bob was, are there any rules that you incorporate for assisting others in abil ability checks? So if, you know, you've got, like, one person who tries a DC, you know, 20 strength check to open a door, and you got three other players that says, well, here, I'll help you out. Is there any rules sure. for assisting in your game? Um, you know, most the it comes up most often in like tournament games. Um, and so I don't I don't know if it's well, it's obviously not rules as written, but um, sometimes we'll have like you know th those attempting to assist will make a DC ten check for the um you know to add a plus two or plus four to the uh, to the to the check. I think it'd be probably it's it'd probably be way cooler though if um you know for each person aiding you you know you bump up the die by one right so it's the d twenty d twenty four d thirty d fifty that'd be a cooler way to go about it and probably more dcc you know use the dice chain as opposed to yeah yeah something else i i'll I'll say from remembering a couple of adventures you've written um it seems like it's kind of an ad hoc thing that is different for different situations in sailors which is admittedly was kind of written when 
the actual rules were still being established. You've got like one thing for a combined strength of like 40 or something like that for yeah. opening a port cola skate. And then in escape from the purple planet, everyone starts out like all chained up and the like how to free yourselves works in a, in a different way with, with assisting each other. So yeah, it, you're completely right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it is, I don't know. There, yeah. There's no rules as written. It's like what Harley said, just do what makes sense at the time. And Harley, uh, so in the Dungeon Crawler server, we have these rule discussions all the time, and it's on the Goodman Games server too. <laughs> but you know, uh, as much as I like to, uh, you know, incorporate my own imagination and rules, I do like to know what is in a system, what the rules for that one are. And so, and uh, a question we didn't prep you for the first time, and it's nowhere in the book. And you know, anyone who's played RPGs can make up their own rule. But how far does a torch let you see? <laughs> um so so let, let me let me preface all of this with i really respect you know the way you run your games i think it's it's fair to the players like and you know if if we're all just playing make-believe you know why even roll dice at all um there's there, i think there's a lot of value in in knowing how the reality is framed and, and it helps to have a more immersive game if i if i can trust in the reality and know that oh you know this is Matt's going to r- run it this way, not because Matt has feelings about it. Um, he's not just going to make it up on the fly. He knows how, you know, this rea- we have an agreement, a shared agreement on how this reality behaves. There's a ton of value in that. Um, I think a torch, um, excuse me, um, it's going to be 60 feet, but, you know, you think one of the, th- I don't know if you guys have played, um, my gosh, I can't remember. Um, beneath the well of brass. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, when I was when I was writing that, you know, it was it was it was it was it, it was living so strongly in me how poorly light illuminates something like a cave or a narrow corridor. You know, these 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 torches and and the smoke they give off. I was I was just that was that was kind of like living really strong with me at the time when I was writing that. Um, but anyways, but what, yeah, so what do, what do torches do? What is it? 30 feet, 60 feet? I think I usually play it's 30 feet, but yeah, yeah. You know, there was, sense. there was a whole discussion about this one day, you know, how far does a torch let you see? Uh, huh. It, it, it only because I'm curious because, um, how far then, how far can you away? Can you be seen if you're carrying a torch? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Ooh. Probably, uh, you know, at least much further, <laughs> 300 right, yards, right? like a long, like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, we've got some extra time, so I'm gonna hit you up with the uh, you know, all kinds of questions till oh, we no. run out of time. Um, <laughs> how much, uh, how much input in writing did you do for the annual? Um, let's see, Are the, the mechanicals yours? No, I think when the annual came along, I don't think, know that I. Gosh, I would have to look at the table of contents. Did they have, did they have the kind of like the Kung Fu Masters in that? I did a couple of those, but maybe that wasn't the annual. So. No, those were in a, yeah. a yearbook from a couple years ago. Here, I I got one that uh, another bonus question that we we cut from the official questions tonight. Um, sure. And uh, depending on your familiarity, familiarity uh, back on DCC day, there was the Book of the Fallen Gods. Yes. Which I don't, I looked in it and you didn't write any of that. So your familiarity, if I can say that word, um, maybe somewhat minimal, but they're gods that are kind of outside the normal sphere. They're, they're not worshipped and, you know, they're gods of entropy and things like that. On the purple mm-hmm. planet, different gods get affected in different ways, like, uh, or in gods and, and patrons. Like I think, um, yeah. uh, you know, it's a, it's, the the three fates they're just fine uh what the demon prince of the the wastes he he's good because the purple planet's got a lot of deserts but if you're a cleric of dane thar you're like you can't pat pat uh you roll with like on a d16 instead of 20s and you can't cast anything above a second level spell uh so for the book of the fallen gods these kind of a little off not quite off brand that's not the right way to say it but but they're different than the other one from the other patrons. How might they mm-hmm. function on the purple planet on just in, in a general speaking? Because there's like seven, so we can't cover all of them. 
Right, right. In in my in my mind, um, they're they're actually stronger on the purple planet. Um, just because you know the absence, you know you. You you take away some of those those stronger deities and gods and and then all of a sudden it gives it gives these you know more these forgotten these lost gods you know they they still exist in the shadows right you know just because they're not mm-hmm. shining as bright as the sun you take the sun out oh and then the night is filled with stars and so you take out the big gods and like all of a sudden it's like whoa look at all these things out here that you know we could be worshiping that we could interact with that we could potentially piss off that we could you know use to our aid so. And in, in my mind, you know, those gods are are more accessible on the on, on the purple planet. OK, so maybe like a plus one on the die chain for invoking them or something. Yeah. Or or even but you, you even have the opportunity because like um, at least and this this reveals, you know, where I'm going with, um, you know, chessmen and, and warlords on the purple planet. Like mm-hmm. maybe, you know, if you can convince this army of of two million kith that, that worships you. Um, you know, to 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 take to take on this new god, or you know, possibly even you know, worship your character as 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 a new god. You know, what 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 potential lies there for uh, you know these 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 deities, these gods? Um, and so there's Limited there's a lot cosmic of cosmic power, right? <laughs> there's there's a lot of like uh, I don't know psychic power to be tapped there in terms of of belief especially if you have this this you know l- utterly loyal band of 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 kith behind you um you know that that are going to believe anything you tell them makes sense all right hey, Arlie, very cool well, I think thank we you we got time for one more question um this one comes up a lot with a transition from zero level to first level i see a lot of new players asking this so how do I explain my wizard studied for years after getting out of zero level to know these spells? How does the, how does my you know farmer automatically become a master swordsman and super strong? Do you have any advice for uh, players that are, are trying to connect those dots, or do you even worry about that at all? Um, you know, so I and, and Stefan can probably recall this, but I I attempted to address some of that in Beneath the Well of Brass. Um, there's like three or four like items or encounters that you know you hit that 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 lead them that that you know potentially lead characters in, into into a, a player if you uh, find, character choice. If you find the spell book, where you become a wizard right there. That uh, the spell book with the seven pointed star, I believe. Exactly, exactly. You know, it, it's it's starting to feed you, you know, th- that direction. Um, and you got the sword that comes out of the lake, like Excalibur, right. that can turn you into right. a, a a dark knight. <laughs> yeah, a hell knight. Yeah, um, that was so much fun to write. Um, so yeah, so okay, so how how do how do you how do you? Well, the cleric is easy, right? Because you're 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 a, a, a person of faith, and all of a sudden, you know. You've, you've survived <laughs> like all our characters should be clerics holy smokes i survived thank you you know whatever whatever god got me here um and 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 thieves are a little bit that you can you can believe them um i think i think wizards are the are the hardest are the hardest uh um oh well but even then okay so like because you don't well okay but rules is written you guys tell me um you 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 make it out of you make it out of the funnel. You make it to first level. Um, you still have to acquire your spells. Um, it's not as if you roll over the next morning and, um, or at least this is how I run my game. I I hope you guys can correct me. Um, and and you know, um, you don't you don't wake up the next day and 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 know these spells. You still have to like locate them somewhere. But maybe I've been running my games wrong. Matt, what can you tell me? I as far as rules is written, uh, you just magically get the spells but it, it all depends on i mean we're we're not there's no account for any kind of time lapse in there uh, sure. so you know and i'll say i know there's a little bit of uh help for this in the also in another dcc day thing uh chanters in the dark um which is kind of like a continuation of sailors um there's also some rules on page 315 uh that uh, about determining new spells and it says uh, remember that spell casting varies from wizard to wizard a magician with a half demon great great grandfather may cast fire spells more easily than a cultist who's purely mortal so you can make up something about your heritage you can say that you learned it from 
you know, summoning animals by just listening to the nature spirits of the forest, um, or, or what have you, or, you know, you can work with your judge to do it, but it's also a, uh, I believe it's, there's something in there. I don't know the, the page though, cause I didn't research this, but there's something in there about rolling an intelligence check, essentially doing that minimal success spell check to actually mm -hmm. learn it. And if you don't, you don't go try to learn something else. Yeah, there's a there's a DCC third party supplement I too I think that goes from a it might be a Studio Nine maybe I can't remember, uh, but that goes from zero level to first level uh, to incorporate stories for that. Uh, I was just curious if you had any advice to, for those uh, people out there that are asking for that kind of guidance, Harley. Um. Well, okay. I, I think. I think, I think. I think there's probably yeah. There's two. You know, and then the other part and you guys have brought this up is that you know the judge can narrate you know and over the next three months you know you know little whiz kid is he's in the back of the of the of the ship you know studying studying his grimoire and you know each day he's manages to mag master magic just a little bit more but yeah i mean you can have it something be as simple as picking up a ring and you know turning invisible <laughs> good tell the player Say, hey, tell me what your montage looks like. There you go. Oh, well played, sir. There you go. Well, we yeah. are just out about about out of time, Harley. Uh, what do you got coming up? What are you uh, working on? Um, I I am finishing up the the stretch goals for DCC 100 right now, and um, and working really closely with Matt Hildebrand and Mike Curtis to to make sure those are all up up to snuff. Everything's been written. Um it's all laid out and, 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 you know, literally there's like one or two illustrations we're still waiting on for DCC 100. But right now the, the project is working on the, 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 the foil character folios, like the, the, okay, you've, you've made it past the funnel. You've made it to level three. You think this character is going to be sticking around for a while. Then you can kind of put them in their, their permanent character logs sort of thing. So that's really exciting. That's a lot of fun. And then, um, and then I'm working on a a, a funnel for a, a, as of yet unannounced um, larger project. It doesn't have anything to do with Purple Planet, um, but um, yeah, I'm 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 getting to go back to you know writing a funnel again, and it's really exciting. It's one of the ideas that I first pitched to Joseph a decade ago. I was like, oh, if we ever do this, this would make a cool funnel. I guess would it be DCC Day two thousand three that we might see this? Um, I, I, I actually just <laughs> this is embarrassing. I just had to ask for an extension because I'm so slow, <laughs> and and Mike's like, well, Joseph keeps kicking it down the line, so I don't, I don't think it's gonna, it's not that. Um, <laughs> but maybe, ne maybe next year's Gen Con. Hopefully, we'll nice. have it together by then. All right, but it, it's uh, it's not it's not just the funnel. There's 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 the lot that Mike's putting it into it. Sounds it's sounds like a big exciting probably license ip kind of situation at least you, it's cool trying to get secret, really cool. secrets out of mike is tough i, I was trying to <laughs> i was trying to get secrets out of him. yeah uh stephanie you got anything coming up oh uh, i'll be seeing you at long con this weekend and uh we you know we're running some games we're gonna have a booth with a bunch of dcc stuff you guys can also come on by and see molon he's uh he's doing great so cool so yeah. cool. Yeah, we will. I will be in Longview, Texas. If you're headed that way, uh, we will be at LongCon setting up our uh, first uh, Goodman Games vendor booth at the convention. Uh, Brendan, we wish you all the best and hope you're feeling better, you and your family yeah. from uh, COVID. Hopefully, you heal up quick, and we're sorry you can't make it. Um, our next episode in two weeks, uh, November 22nd, is going to be with Judge Jen, the amazing Jen Brinkman. Uh, after that, December 6th, we will have Bob Brinkman back on to uh, refute his wife's answers. Then uh, we're going to take a couple weeks off. Uh, so there, our first episode will then be, uh, oh, we, we'll probably have somebody December 20th. We don't have anybody booked yet. So if anybody's looking for a guest spot. But then we're going to take the first uh, Tuesday in January off. And our first mm -hmm. January show of 2023 will be January 17th. Um, Elena, if you could post that Discord link in the chat. Um, we are on the Dungeon Crawler server, DCC fan server, and we have a room in there called Rules is Written. This is going to be a viewer episode for all the fans that watch the show. 
if you uh, have a different idea in any one of the questions or if we got it wrong or if you have a different interpretation or a different even idea how you run something and you want to come and share it with us uh, we're just going to have you know as many people as want to come on on this viewer episode or that elena can handle and uh, we're all going to talk about the rules, and hopefully we'll have some cool guests on here for you guys to conversate with. Uh, but a viewer special to start out 2023. Um, awesome. Harley, thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight. It was a pleasure having you on. And, Such uh, a treat absolutely. to be here. You guys are amazing. I would, I would play in either of your games any day. You guys and are amazing. We so. can commit you to another episode next year, right? <laughs> I'll make up answers then, too. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. Everybody have a good night, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Yep. Bye, y'all. Good night, everybody.